you look at our heart, it is in the center of our life. As soon as we are born, even, even before that, it begins to beat. And it keeps on beating for a long, long time. And, sh and it shares its wisdom with us. It also allows us to continue to nourish our soul and our body. And we exchange our hearts when we need to. Uh, but there comes a time that when, the, when our heart is trying to give us some message, it's important that we listen to it. Uh, it's interesting that we, in our lives, look at um, heart as a pump. It's, it's pumping blood to all aspects of our cells and, and so forth. It, has, it has keeps on dancing in the center of our chest. However, there comes a time that it begins to give us some, some signals of distress. And as I, as I said earlier, uh, our emotions affect our heart as much as is any other coronary artery disease, and often these things need to be looked at together. Over the last uh, several years, um, I've experienced some events in my life that, uh, that led to a broken heart. Um, uh, things that included uh, the death of family members, um, failed relationships, uh, lost dreams, things of that nature. And I eventually found myself in a very cold, dark place, um, and I wasn't really aware of how I arrived at that place. Um, it's a very scary and, and painful place to find yourself. Uh, I came to believe that not only was I not capable of, of um, being loved by another human being, but I found myself in a place where I didn't believe that I was capable of loving anyone else. Um, or anything in my life, including myself. And that's a, a pretty, pretty painful and empty place to find yourself because uh, um, without the capacity to love or, or feel loved, um, you sometimes feel like life just isn't worth living. Sometimes we end up with a broken heart and we're not sure where it came from. Um, you know, maybe there wasn't one specific trigger, but in, in my case, uh, I met with Dr. Chaudry one day and I, I said, you know what? Doctor, I think I know what's wrong with me. Um, I'm suffering from a broken heart. And um, he said something that was pretty simple, but uh, I found to be very uh, profound. Um, he said, hearts are made to be broken. And at first I wasn't uh, really sure what he meant by that. Um, and I wasn't sure um, uh, uh, um, exactly how I could uh, uh, use that in, in my treatment, but um, after thinking about it, he was exactly right. He, he wanted me to, to realize that hearts aren't like um, glasses or dishes where if they break you have to throw them away and you can never use them again. Um, a heart will heal in time. It's, it's not the same um, healing pr process or uh, procedure um, as if you would you know, may maybe break a bone. But just like a broken bone, um, when it does heal, it will heal stronger. Yes, and in the midst of our runs, at times we absolutely do not pay attention to what our body is telling us. It always is. And we are so busy with so many other materials and issues and worries and fears that the signals of the heart or other parts of the body go missed. And that's where the problem arises. But in Scott's case or many other cases, where an individual is able to listen to it and pay attention to that, a lot of healing can be done. Uh, I first started experiencing uh, difficulty um, emotionally back in uh, uh, the fall of last year. And um, I didn't take the, uh, the path that, I, that I'm currently taking as far as recovery goes. Um, I think I was a little bit um, uh, maybe embarrassed, you know, to, to um, admit to other people that I'm going through a difficult time. And I've always been someone who's been very autonomous in regards to uh, uh, taking care of myself. And I never wanted to rely on outside sources. Um, but a big key to recovery is, is recognizing what those sources of, of treatment are and not being afraid um, to talk about uh, the, these things. We're all human, male, female, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, when your heart is aching, your heart is broken, it's broken. So I think we both, uh, you know, we'll take the same path to, to getting to that place um, in recovery. I think the first and the most important thing is, as we were saying earlier on, that people need to know when our body is trying to talk to us. So if I'm having a chest discomfort or pain radiating down my arm or my jaw, 
uh, difficulty breathing and, and symptoms uh, which may be indicating of a you know, heart, heart related issue. Uh, these are the times when we need to be able to listen and not take it, oh my God, I may be just tired or maybe just having you know, a, little, a little difficulty with my chest and whatnot. The one thing that got to be keep pumping in our, in our body is our heart. And if it's not pumping, we won't be around very much. So let's pay attention to those symptoms. So there are many other, you know, if you're getting up and trying to walk and you begin to have some chest discomfort, sweating, and, 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 and so forth. Uh, so the list could be longer, but these are some of the very early common symptoms that we need to be able to pay attention to. Sometimes it can be fairly silent in its uh, appearances as well. But if you're having a discomfort in your chest, or you're, you're kind of getting short of breath, you buy, might as well get a doctor to check it out. We are seeing more patients, and there are reasons for that. One, I've been in practice for a long time, so I've accumulated a lot more patients. But we are seeing a lot of new patients also, and the, that's the courtesy of program like yours, which is educating people. I'm pretty sure that tomorrow, a lot of patients will call their doctors and they want their heart to be checked out because they have one of the combined of symptoms which Dr. Chaudhary just mentioned. Also, uh, People are more educated because American Heart Association, they are also telling people what are the symptoms, what to do, what not to do. And people are recognizing they are uh, risk factors, so they are trying to get checked out if they have family history, they are smokers, they have high blood pressure, diabetes. So uh, because of that, I'm seeing more and more patients every week. It's amazingly how much the cardiology has improved. Uh, I think there's one field uh, which where the medicine has really progressed is the field of cardiovascular medicine. We have uh, a progress in all the areas of cardiology. First, the prevention. Second, the diagnosis. And third is the treatment. Now, when it comes to prevention, everybody now knows that uh, smoking is a risk factor. This actually is one of the biggest risk factors. They st banned smoking in Scotland, and they found their admission in the hospital of the chest pain has decreased significantly. That's the published article. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, high, high blood pressure, it's a silent killer. You need to get it under control because people, people have no symptom. So they don't seek any attention for that. Diabetes, family history, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, obesity, especially on the belly. I think the fat there is the killer fat. So, um, and the list goes on and on, the fa positive family history, but you cannot change the family, but you can change the other risk factors. So that part has Im improved quite a bit. Now the third part is, the, uh, the second part is diagnosis. For the diagnosis, uh, we have got much more modalities now. We have got the stress test, the stress echo. If you cannot walk, we have drug-induced stress test. We have CT angiography, which came out recently. We have PET scan. So we have a lot more diagnosis. You just have to tell your doctor, and one or the other way you will figure out that there's a blocked artery or there's not a blocked artery. A lot of people have a problem reconciling with their symptoms like uh, they will have chest discomfort or some indigestion type of feeling and they will have, they'll think it's just my stomach and I don't need to worry about it. They will take some rollades and just rest and the pain will go away because that's the way the heart behaves in the beginning. Unless you're having a heart attack, then the pain does not go away. It's just example is myself. 15 years ago, I was having some indigestion type of feeling and I took some Prilosec at that time. The pain went away, so I thought I'm, I'm in good shape. Next morning I had discomfort again, so I told my wife, and she told me, no, you are a cardiologist, you need to get it checked out. So I went to the hospital thinking that I'll get a heart cath first, and then I will get an endoscopy. And from the heart cath lab, I went to the open heart surgery. And that was 15 years ago. So uh, if I, if being knowledgeable as I am, if I can fall through the crack, what about the people who, do, who are not cardiologists and who, have, who do not know much about these symptoms? I think it's time for us to combine both. We are one living human being. And within that living human being, we have a heart that gets broken or it, it's a heart that gets attacked. Either way, we got to be able to attend to that. And, and stress can cause, we talked about earlier, you know, family uh, history and whatnot. People who are very well connected and have friends and have a decent lifestyle of, you know, of, of balances, they have fewer maladies like heart attacks. 